everybody, this is Dead Linux, and I know you've probably never seen my face before, though. this may be a little frightening for you, but it is a catfishing day, uh, there's no ice in the ground, obviously, it's summer, and yes, North Dakota thaws, so if you're thinking we just constantly have snow on the ground that's been there for 25 years, it's, that's a minor misconception. Anyway, the first thing, the reason why I was shooting this video with my buddy Jed, who's behind the camera here, is because... When catfishing day, it's Friday afternoon, we're going out catfishing, I have tons of bait, and we have to find a spot. Now the problem with finding a spot is you have to keep in mind a couple of things. One's temperature, obviously. So we're dealing with about 90 degrees, 80 to 90 degrees today, and there's not a whole lot of wind. So that means if you're a fish, high pressure, high temperature, they're going to be huddled up in certain spots. So you're trying to think of the places where there's holes, where there's a lot of air, that kind of thing. Uh, second thing to consider as well is uh, basically uh, population of the spots. Since we're in town here, uh, there's a couple of spots that everybody knows about, and they're going to hit that first. And we're going to the first one over here. And we're on the Red River, of course, Red River of the North. And the first spot we're going to hit over here is a dam right in the middle of town. The problem is it's very accessible, so it will probably be loaded with people. We're going to check it out see how it goes. But the thing about this particular dam is that they redid it a while back. It used to be what's called a low head dam. And for those of you that are not familiar, low head dams are basically not, they're, you know, two to four feet high in the middle of the river, all concrete underneath, and oftentimes they're flat across the top. And so you just have this even flow and they control water flow, right? Well, what North Dakota and, and other states in the region here have decided is that that prevented uh, walleye uh, spawning habits and northern pike spawning habits as well as catfish and they're basically detrimental. So in order to increase a lot more of the, the, the trans, uh, uh, I want to say transportation, but the, the traveling of the fish, they had to change them. And what they did is they laddered them. So what we have are laddered low head dams where you have basically, they keep the dam there underneath but they layer it with rock. So instead of this drop, which no fish can really go over except an Asian carp, which we will not talk about in this video because they will never come here. Knock on wood. But uh, the laddering means that when the water is higher, fish can travel upstream in the spring when we kind of flood here, and then in the fall and then during the summer, and they're kind of locked in position. It also makes it really a nice place to hang out. It looks pretty, all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna check it out and see what we find. And if it's a spot we can actually shoot up here, we'll shoot it, otherwise we may have to move on to another one. So hang on with us, we'll be back in a bit. All right, so here we are. We went to the spot we thought would be packed and it's, uh, it's a weekend, it's a holiday weekend. It's a, it's a holiday weekend in, in the United States anyway. It's the 4th of July. If, you, if you're in, uh, watching this from another country, uh, that's where we like to uh, blow up stuff and kill things. Um, I'm kidding, that's a horrible joke. It's a horrible joke. Go ahead and dislike the video right now if you like. That's just fine. And, um, you know, I'll cry in my sleep tonight. No. Uh, what I'm doing here is, this is actually Jed's rod. I'm just redoing the hook on it. And I'm doing this, the same tactic I did previously in the other old, old video on the same channel. And so what we got here is we have a, a spoon-style sinker here. And this is kind of nice. It's a... Uh, it got a nice uh, teardrop shape, so it cuts the water really well. But the other thing about it is the spoon has kind of come back into popularity around here because if you're casting out, of course, you're going to be at an angle. The thing I like about it, it just kind of hits like that. But this nice, uh, this nice shape here allows it to get around snags and flips and turns a little bit better. And so it's easier to, uh, to, to get it around things. If you use like a regular, uh, here, let me show you. There's a couple different kinds of sinkers here. Um, if you use something like this, and you have it on just kind of like a, oh, I want to say like a Texas or a Carolina rig, the problem with that is, is I've gotten this snagged pretty easily before because it has nowhere to go and it doesn't flip around too much. It, it sits really nice in the bottom, you know, like that. Um, but if you got a line going through it, like, let's say like uh, here, like that, right? I've... I don't know, I just, I've had difficulty with this, and it also, I think, drags the bait to the bottom. If you're shore fishing, if you're shore fishing, if you're fishing from a boat, forget it, this is just fine. But anyway. Hmm? Oh, sorry, I thought there was a 
Jed was motioning with his hand, and I thought that meant that I need to run for cover because the cops are coming. Uh, but it's not that, so we're okay. It's fine. Um, not that I'm in trouble with the law. Um, we're not trespassing at all. This is actually a public park, and it's actually really pretty, so we'll shoot some shots of this too, I hope. Um, anyway, going back around stickers, here's the last one I'll show you. This one's just kind of a bullet style, standard looped on the top sinker. Um, cuts through the water again, really nice, with the nice shape there. Boom, hits the bottom. Problem with that, and actually you can see the camera shake a little bit there. Problem with that is that this thing can embed itself in the mud and the silt in the bottom really easily, so you'll think you're snagged, and you won't be. Um, it, it, just not the way I like to play ball, so I use this in, in desperate measures when I'm having trouble with heavy current. Out here, nah. So, what we're going to do here is I'm going to just snell a hook on here really quickly. And I'll show you how I do that and uh, show you what kind of hooks we're using. So here we go. Uh, you notice I'm carrying clippers with me so we can easily cut line. I'd bite it with, through them with my teeth if you weren't watching. Um, that which don't do that kids don't don't do that don't bite line with your teeth this is I'm using compu completely pure mono because it's cheap but it's about 25 to 30 pound test so if I'm trying to bite through this I'm trying to bite through plastic that's that strength and that's not really cool so let's not do that but anyway I'm gonna take my uh, big game line here if you've never seen this tactic this is awesome nice little beer koozie here big roll of line and this is trilene uh, big game line pull this out like this like so. I don't really want to have too much of a leader on this. Uh, the bait's going to pull it down. Let's just do like uh, that. Alright, so we've got a piece of line here. I'm going to grab a hook. Oh, I flipped this over. You saw that happen too. I was. This is the side I wanted. I swear to God. Okay, so let's see here. I've got mostly these sized hooks. So these are kind of... <clears throat> hook size is a weird thing. Last video I talked about circle hooks. This is a circle hook, as you can see here. So the beauty of that is you see the shank right here. You see that nice point going in so that if you've got you know, a fish that, uh, that bites on here, when it turns its head, that little point is going to embed inside of the fish's mouth. So you don't have to set this hook. In fact, setting this hook is an art form. You really don't want to try and pull back hard. Because, as you can see otherwise, it's a complete teardrop shape. I mean, if I bite right here, I can pull straight off and it's fine. It's just a different style. But the thing to think about with a circle hook, and this is something that uh, the guy at the bait shop is telling me about, you only have this much clearance. See my thumbnail there? That's it. That's how much space you have that the mouth, the, the mouth of the fish can get between the, the shank of the hook and the point. So when you're buying circle hooks, look for the gap don't look for the size of the hook okay because if we look at a different hook si uh, style here like uh, here this guy for example see that smaller hook right but look at the gap the gaps the same so this is a smaller gauge hook but the gap is just as big as this with a circle hook so with a bigger circle hook, you're going to get the same size gap as the other hooks you're normally using. It's something to keep in mind. If you're losing fish because you've got too small of a circle hook, that might be why. Um, but then keep in mind, you've got this big hunk of metal uh, in your bait. So I don't know. The size hook I used to use before, and still do, is... Uh, uh, this is how I keep my hooks and all set up. It's that guy. So see that size. A lot smaller. So, you know, have I caught big fish with this? Well, if you consider like 12 to 15 pounds big, yeah. Um, if you don't, then don't use this hook. Uh, but then, look at this tiny, tiny gap there. So I, I cannot really be aggressive with setting the hook on this sucker because I'll be pulling it right out of the fish's mouth. So, you bass anglers, anybody who's used to that, where you're used to big, dramatic hook sets, not going to work out here. So anyway, but what I'm going to get Jed set up with on, on his line here is this style guy here. And if we start uh, getting little nibbles and no catches on this, then we'll switch it out and try a smaller one. Or, you know, if we're not getting any hits on this at all, why not swap it? I mean, you have to change stuff up. You just have to. So, we're going to give it a shot here.
this is probably the cool part. So, setting up a hook, right? This is how I do it. This is not necessarily the right way. So, going through the top, put your finger on it. Got it? Okay. So, pull it down a little bit. Now, I'm going to go around the eyelet once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, eleven. Now, anybody else who does this is probably going to start yelling at me for that. And I just did a twelve right there. Well, this works for me, buddy, okay? If it, if it doesn't work for you, post your own video of, of how to do it right and tell me how that works for you. Anyway, we're going to slip this right, okay. Now, I put the, the, the line through the straight through the top. You want to come out the bottom end of that eyelet when you're done so the hook hangs straight like that. So you see I've got all that line to catch up with and then I'm going to pull taut like that. And oftentimes, because I don't want to hook myself, I'll take my neat, neat little clippers here, use the eyelet on the clippers, hold this close so I don't kill myself, put that around the hook, take this with my hand so I'm not hooking myself and just pull it real taut. And sometimes this is going to be disgusting, but Yes, I have taken my tetanus shots. Anyway, um, just kind of wet that down a little bit, bump it up, just to tighten it just a little bit more because mono stretches, of course, but mono also absorbs a little bit of water. So what you do is basically you're just tightening that knot just a little bit more to get a little bit straighter. Then, trim up your tag end. Excuse me, trim up your tag end. Like so. And I was just thinking about this the other day. This is a weird thing. Cut it at an angle. Like, uh, I'm just gonna pinch this off like that. Don't pinch it straight off. Why does that sound weird? Well, I don't know. Because you think if you pinch it off, if you cut it flat off, is it gonna get snagged easier? Maybe. I don't know. I just thought that might be better because then you got this nice flat edge here that's not gonna catch as on as much stuff. I don't know. I, I don't snag as, as much now as I used to. So, that's the hook, and here's the easy part. So here we've got the slip sinker setup that I've shown before, but I'll show it again. I've got just a nice little loop knot for around my spoon weight here, leading up to a short little leader, tying off to a swivel, I'm using that swivel as my slip sinker. So basically, it should be keeping the bait off the bottom. Now somebody told me, yeah, use a Carolina rig or a Texas rig, you won't get snagged. Well, I've gotten snagged with that. I like this better because I can sacrifice the weight if I have to. If it's a Carolina rig or a Texas rig, it's on the terminal line, which means if I pull too hard and snap the line, I lose everything. This way, hopefully, uh, I don't lose everything. I hopefully lose the hook, but I also think it just helps to keep the bait up off the bottom, which is, I think, more of the key here. The more you can keep the bait up a few inches off the bottom, the better you'll be. The more the bait sits directly on the bottom, the harder I think it is for the fish to find and pick up. But that's that's a theory. That's not founded in fact. I'm not swimming down there with the fish when they bite, but that's what I think. So, you know, troll me as hard as you'd like. I catch fish. So, here we go. Here's the knot. So here's the terminal end swivel. We're going to put a loop through there. Okay, see me doing this? And then we're going to go like so. And then I'm going to pull it around. And then I'm going to pull the loop through that circle that I just made. Like that. Okay, and then we're going to take the hook and put it through that loop and watch your fingers. Put the tag end through so it doesn't get snagged. And then that last little part of that uh, opposite end of the tag, put that through the loop too. So basically I'm doing a reverse uh, palomar knot, basically, or a fisherman's quick knot. We tighten that up, and there you go. That's it. Real simple, real strong. Take our clippers here and clip it at an angle because it, you know, it just seems right to me. I don't know. I don't know. It's fine. Okay, so there's our rig. So now we're going to get a piece of whatever on the end here. We're going to put our bait here. And for the Red River of the North, you always, and this is what you'll hear from anybody, you want to keep with three baits. And this, this bait selection sounds funny. Uh, white sucker or sucker fish, which you can buy in the bait shops around town here, but you can, you're can you only allowed to use sucker in the Red River. You're not allowed to use sucker anywhere, anywhere else in North Dakota, and I don't know anywhere else in Minnesota you can use it. Um, gold eye or moon eye, 
which is actually a uh, rough fish that's caught here. They're really pretty, and if we get one, we'll get one on camera. But uh, they're, they're allowed to be used as bait fish, and they're really good as bait fish. In uh, Canada, actually, they're smoked, and you will see them served in restaurants. They're really tasty smoked. They are absolutely horrible if you try to eat them without them smoked. Um, not that I've tried, but I've messed with enough raw fish that, you know, know what you're doing. Um, and then the last bait you can use is frogs. So we've got all three here today. So we're going to see which one works best and keep using that. That's the tactic. Those are the only three baits you really need to stick to. You can try chicken liver. It works. It's fine. You can try shrimp. That works really well. You can try all the other kind of catfish baits, but stay away from stink baits. Why do I say that? They have a. They don't really work that well because they don't have a whole lot of the same... I don't know. There's guys in the red that probably use stink bait all the time and it's fine. The best type of sneak bait you're going to use, though, is rotten sucker or soured fish. Uh, if you want to use that, works in the spring. We're in midsummer now, uh, so you're probably not going to use it. But um, that's the thing I would say about that. So this video is going to be a little bit long, so I don't want to keep it too long because we kind of want to get to fishing before the sun goes down. Um, but those are kind of the basics. So uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. But we're going to keep fishing here and see what we can come up with. So stay tuned. You got stuff. Okay, well we've got a fish on, Jed's using frogs, and uh, we didn't think it was going to be much, and all of a sudden here we have this little fighter here. You got him? There he is. Okay, do you want me to get the net? Oh, here we go. What's that guy? That's a cat. Are you comfortable handling him? You got it? Oh, really? Out there? Oh, this is going to get ugly. Um, I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and now he looks all dis disgruntled with the fish. Yeah. Can you hold it by the tail? We'll see. Can I take a look at it? Sure. This is a standard channel catfish, and this is actually a um, pretty mature cat. And if you turn the head a little bit toward me, uh, with the, the top, the forehead, yep, you'll see this is a female. It's all flat here. Uh, if there were two bumps right above here, we'd see that as being a male, as far as I've ever been told. But this one's a greener fish. But if you grab the around the tail, Jed, so we can see the actual fin, um, you'll see, as opposed to a bullhead, this is a nice fork tail here. Um, nice little specimen of a fish. Nice little guy. He's cute. He's still got some of his uh, freckles left because they get little tiny black spots. They get really dark ones when they're young, and they get little ones, they get little as they get older. So, nice fish, Jed. Whoa. Oh, and he's. See, look what you did. Don't worry, I got him. I got him. We're gonna grab him like so. Oh, I know. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. And, and we're just gonna let him go a little bit. Let him swim off. There he goes. He's happy. Now you're wondering probably why I didn't want to keep him as a keeper. I like him a little bigger, I guess. You know, did you want to keep him? No. Okay. But we have a fish. We've got a fish. So we this is time. good. So we proved. Good. Now it was on frogs. Okay, so it was on frogs. So we proved we had sucker fish out there, and I've actually still got my other rod um, working on sucker here. And this is kind of the area. I suppose I should kind of give you a tour here. Here's the low head dam I was talking about. So if you look up here, sorry for the vibration here. Um, if you look along here, that's the dam, the actual dam part. And you can see where the, the cement began once upon a time, right over there. And then that was just a fall off directly down. But see, now there's all this rock here, and it's all been rip wrapped up. It's really a slow, gradual thing, especially since the, the river is so low right now here in this area. Um, you can see, um, that's where we were sitting before. There used to be water up to here, and now we've got all this sand here. And this is late. This is standard for uh, late summer anyway. Oh, yeah, you see that guy? There's a carp out of the red. He's a little dead. So, you know, don't get disgusted if, if dead fish like that gross you out. I'm sorry. You can puke now. It's fine. And um, we're going to see what else goes on. So, uh, we're going to see if we can catch some more fish and uh, bring you along with us. So, we'll be back in just a moment. Anyway, so, as I was telling you before, you know, you have the whole slip sinker, you know, three-way setup with the sinker on the bottom and everything like that. Well, occasionally it doesn't matter, you can still lose everything as it is, and this was actually a clean break, so I snapped it pretty good. But uh, it was on that log right straight out there, and I would stupidly cast over the top of it. So that was brilliant on my part. So, of course, it snagged it pretty good. The problem with this whole setup is, if you use 
bigger bait, your bait can get as snagged just as easily as anything else can. So you can lose it. It happens. So what do you do? You use smaller bait? Good. You use smaller chunks of bait. They'll attract a lot smaller fish and they will steal your bait. So it's kind of a pain. You know, you, you have to kind of judge, you know, do you, do you have a lot of little fish biting on your line? If so, try a larger bait. If you have a larger bait and you've got a lot of snags around you, then what are you going to do? Do you switch down size to a smaller hook? Like I've got here, I'm going back to the small one. I had the larger one on there. It's, it's all guesswork, it really is. But the, I think the biggest thing is always be prepared. I always have several setups ready. Like I got this one ready to go. Um, and then I'm going to throw on, let's see, I've got one already ready. Um, what do usually do? Let's see. This might decide that I got points on. Stupid cell phones. You don't need cell phones. It's modern technology. We just use hooks and sinkers. Um, that's a three. That's a two. Yeah. So I usually have a setup already in the bag. So slide the weight on, like so. I have a hook that's already uh, snelled. Line's a little old, but it should be fine. Put a little loopy loop, like I showed you before. So, this is coming after losing my entire rig, right? And one whole loop, like so. Pull it through. fish and you don't get frustrated with knots, you're not doing it right, basically. Knots should always be the bane of your existence, yet the only thing you know how to do. There. So here we go. I'm already ready to uh, fish again. This line does feel pretty frayed, so I'm going to lose it. Anyway, we're going to fish for a little while longer here and then probably cut the video, or uh, probably leave here. So I'm going to leave you guys at that. So I'm hoping this has been enjoyable. I hope you see kind of how we do things up here uh, a little bit differently. That's in. That's not even a knot. What was I thinking? Okay, anyway. So I'm glad you guys came along. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for me and my buddy Jed here for shooting the video. And thanks for catching the only fish we uh, caught so far. We'll catch some more. But we'll have some more of these. So enjoy, stay tuned, and we'll see you around. Thanks for coming. Bye.